I didn't really play any new games 2020 and I think I have a good reason for it. Don't you dare fucking lie to me. Even if I tried, I really couldn't buy any new games, but I still managed to go through some older games I've always wanted to play through, so might as well share those and, to be honest, I wanted to 100% as many games as I could this year, so I platinum three different titles on my PS4. Yeah, you could say I'm a gamer. The perfect Spider-Man game ever created by God. All the Spider-Man 2 fans are going to light me on fire and spear me now, but realistically this might be one of the most optimized superhero games ever created. Now, I never got to check out Miles Morales yet, so I could be even more impressed or vice versa, but, but I got a big old lick of what heaven tasted like and I can't go back. I will keep it brief since it's so popular, but web slinging along with the flow of combat is what true love feels like and the location, New York City, never felt so spectacular. I went through this game so easily and I had to get the Platinum Trophy because my life isn't meaningful and I don't regret it a single bit. Spider-Man felt like a modern classic and I hope to play Miles Morales sooner than later. Flipping the switch, I decided to download the 2D fighting game Brawlhalla to play with friends and unfortunately, I became pretty good at it. Hilarious things happened in multiplayer, great combos and clips were made, it's a great free game to play with friends. And yes, I also got the platinum trophy for this game too, because I just thought it would be fun to prove that I'm still a virgin. Thank the lord Battlefront 2 came into my life because it made it significantly better. I've played through the older Battlefront on Xbox and as a Star Wars kid growing up, of course I loved it more than my family. But after taking a break from watching and adoring Star Wars heavily, Battlefront 2 came at the perfect time in my life, revitalizing my love for the Star Wars universe. Battlefront 2 was free with a PlayStation subscription, along with being updated to not have the paid loot boxes, so it became just an amazing Star Wars experience to play through alone and with my friends. Heroes vs Villains might be one of the most genius modes to be created, good Jedi vs the Sith and more bad characters. We were dropped into lobbies with fully stacked tryhards but that made us good fast, making it satisfying when I destroy a good player with Leia or with the combo I learned playing Kylo Ren. Battlefront made me remember how much I really do appreciate the Star Wars universe and the franchise as a whole. Rise of the Tomb Raider was awesome and that might be from my lack of experience with Adventure Puzzle Survival X games like this. That doesn't even matter when this Tomb Raider game is great in almost every aspect. Looting, combat, and exploration, which is the three main components of this game, all really smooth. Along with finding most of the game's collectibles, uh, the locations and finds are pretty exciting to discover. The story feels true to the older Tomb Raider games, but can resemble a nice action movie. I really have no complaints about this game rather than some oddly difficult moments and a glitch here or there. Tomb Raider games might be slightly pushed down from the Uncharted series, which is a fairly better series than most. But playing as Laura Croft and finding an interesting tomb, reading in on the lore of the characters, Laura's father, or even just an artifact's history is all a specific type of exploration you can only get in the Tomb Raider series. Awesome game and I didn't even play through the DLC. I don't really care for Fall Guys. In retrospect, it should be amazing since it's literally Mario Party Battle Royale. It just doesn't last for me. I didn't mention it here though because not only did I hit 300 subscribers on a stream of me playing Fall Guys, but I collabed with Terizu's stream and my boy Jack Division, and that was very fun. Thank you for that. Here's a game I gave up 100% completing, but I don't regret beating. Shadow of the Colossus is the worst, best game you could play. The mechanics are frustrating for 50% of the entire game. It's annoying dying for what felt like no reason whatsoever, but if you look past that and practice a little, it turns into a really rewarding game to play. The story feels like it's basically not there, so I tend to look at this game as just a boss rush. 
but you explore the world and locate the different colossus or colossi to try and defeat them. It's obviously a pretty hard game, but it's harder to understand and master everything. Once you get a hold of all the tricks and mechanics, 90% of the bosses become just really easy. I remember one of the earlier bosses took around 45 minutes for me to beat, which is too long. I figured out later that you can hold down your sword's stabs, making them do more damage on the Colossus, making my return to that boss easy. I don't want to say I was bad, so let's blame it on the game. Beating that boss again took me less than 2 minutes the next time. Yeah, learning the timing and functions really make the whole world's difference. But I liked beating the game, and it would be fun getting through it again. I will not be caught dead doing that anytime soon, though. Here are some random PS4 games I did play a bit of, but not enough to complete or love it. Genshin Impact, fun, colorful, liked the whole concept, didn't last with me. Apex Legends got into it this year, played on and off with friends. Currently, me and those same friends are halfway through a dying light, which is a good old time. Parkour with zombies, story is good enough for most scenes. The big zombies are quite scary. So we are quite lengthy into this video, no, and no Nintendo games. I took 2020 as a chance to not play too many video games. If I did, it was mostly multiplayer. 2020 was kind of wasted for me in that sense, but it was the first year I actually hung out with friends and talked to a lot more people than I usually do. I added new great people to my real personal life and I grew with my online peeps as well. I moved out and I'm still new to the whole community aspect, voice chatting a lot and collabing and just hanging out, it, it still gets me nervous and I don't know how to approach, but I got a lot better at it and made some new friends along the way who all love Nintendo. Speaking of Nintendo, I like this game. What can I say, I'm a sucker for lame Pokemon stories. I actually grew fond of Pokemon Sword in that time that I went through it. It was great to see all kinds of new Pokemon and the gym battles were pretty flashy. It is very simple, but it's unique to the main series, no doubt. So I can not give credit where it's due. I had a blast playing through it, even though it was beginner friendly. I enjoyed it for what it was and that's how I got the best experience out of it. The later game I'm fond of too, but still nothing was even remotely difficult. My Pokemon fainted completely just once, and that's because I wanted to see how far I can go without healing. I recommend playing through without XP share and maybe even a Nuzlocke just to spice gameplay up. Yeah, I know I went from the newest to literally the oldest in the series, but I am in love with the classic Pokemon games. I'm not done with the game as of yet, but I picked up Pokemon Red to experiment with it. I wanted to get a smaller team with a Dragonite to see if I can be as strong as a normal team of 6 that I would usually have. So far I'm at Victory Road and doing amazing. I'm destroying every little thing I come across, even the trainers themselves. Gary becomes a little loser that I beat up just for fun, so overall a great time. <laughs> Wow, the original F-Zero, a masterpiece in extreme electric racing. The whole execution to the first F-Zero game is just beautiful and I'm glad I decided to play it for a bit. It's an easy pickup game that's hard to master, but failing is still fun as you blow up from hitting the walls too much. Such a monster. I saved the best for last. Curious George for GameCube was a little treat for me. Deciding to play in the middle of the night only taking about 2 hours, becoming the best 2 hours of mankind. Curious George is just silly and I respect its charm. Making a whole lot of something out of nothing makes me smile and I think I fell in love with Curious George in that aspect. Series of course, since it's so carefree and reminds me of innocent happy childhood moments. Again. It's making a whole lot of something out of nothing, and I think I carry that along with my channel, making lesser known games something out of what other people would see as nothing. It's not trying to be artistic or genius or insane, it's literally just a monkey doing his thing and I love that. I mentioned already how I didn't focus too much on just gaming. I took the year to explore some anime and TV shows and broadened my horizons. I won't go into detail like I did with the games. But it did make me want to talk about anime, which 
I will start doing on my new channel. Yes, it's really random, but it's called The Ramen Shop. Me and my friend are going to hopefully make chill style videos about different anime and cartoons, and I'll even focus on some anime games. Link is in the description. Subscribe if you find it interesting. A terrifying year can turn into something great if you make it. Friends and family, gaming and anime are all the things that help me along the way. It's not impossible to cancel out happiness when it might just be a day away.